Next, we have the payment of the claims. We have $294,468.95. Um, we had a couple of large purchases in the uh, street department and bought a truck, and I think a lease payment, too, um, came out. And that was a uh, really large portion of it. So it's 100 and some for the truck, and then almost 50000 for a payment. I'll find the exact numbers real quick. Is there anything else, Tish, that you wanted to Everything else was pretty mention? standard. Except pulling numbers out of a hat. We'll try to We've had pretty those. small ones the last couple meetings in a row, so. Yeah. Um, is there any questions from the board? No, I just was going to mention that as well. The, the two trucks? Or the truck and the what truck truck was it? Um, I was going to see. Do you know, Tish, what kind of truck it was? I can't remember. Off At top the street head. department? Mm -hmm. uh, Packer? Was it a Packer? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it was $140,000 for um, a, a that went to a Trans Chicago Truck Group for a Packer. Um, and then, like I said, there was like, a, I think there was a lease payment or a. We're getting very close to getting rid of all the leases. So yeah. That's good. yeah. Let's see where that payment was. But I'm trying to remember what it was. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you remember, Tish. Any questions from the public? Uh, if there's no further comment, do I have a motion to uh, approve the payment of the claims? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Uh, blight claims. We have no blight claims uh, for this meeting. Um, city Attorney's Report. Do you have anything, <coughs> Mr. Kerr? I have nothing at this time. Okay. Uh, moving on to unfinished business. I show nothing under unfinished business. Um, I was going to mention to the board the, the uh, St. Charles Bazaar, um, they, um, one, of the, one of the vendors are, uh, had discharged the, the grease from one of their vendors into the storm drain. Oh. And they've been warned about it before, so I didn't know if the board wanted to give them a a letter, I guess this is the third year that we've, after words, we saw they, the grease from a grease trap that had been poured down a, a storm drain. So um, it's just something to keep in mind, I guess. Yeah, for, I mean, that's next year cause a costly thing for us. Yeah, well, and if, if the utilities were notified, they'd go out and they'd pump the, the storm, the, all that grease out of that uh, trap and give them the bill, which would probably nullify any fundraising they did at their bazaar, so. Um, Is it the same vendor every time? I think it's volunteers that's uh, doing it. Um, they're volunteering for the group and then just doing that. So, but we need to make sure to let them know that it is a serious issue that could cost them a hefty fine. How do you want that to be handled? Well, I was going to ask the board, do you guys want to send a letter or? Absolutely. How, how, do we, how are we aware of it? Um, yeah, he's noticed we, it. I've told him each year, please don't believe the guys to stop doing that. And it's happened every time. I get pictures on my phone. So, yeah. Is it something that you've talked to Stormwater about and see what kind of issue that it might? I mean, there might be a cost to this. There would be. I know Todd said that I he. Think they would, I, I think that those guys had sent the bomb down. Maybe I'm wrong. I kind of left it right here. I didn't call them because I thought maybe it would cause a right. situation. So, so I guess we could talk to Jamin and ask him. That's okay. I mean, if there's a fee, I don't see why if they've already been told not to do this, why we would occur that cost. Well, we haven't been fined. It's just if they go out and if, if the utilities were to see it and have to do that and pump it, to clean out their storm drains because there's a significant amount of grease in it, then they would give that to somebody. I don't think that we would get it, but 
we have it notified the utilities that that's yeah. that we solve that. If they do go out, then they probably would get a fine. I mean, obviously the utilities need to make because it could be one of those long term. If we don't take care of it now, and it washes its way down to where they're cutting roads out down the down the way just because they couldn't get it where it's at. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I don't know if we want to. I don't know how the board wants to handle that. I'm definitely in favor of a letter if they've been told more than once, more than twice, then I think something more formal than just a, hey man, don't do that, yeah. might be where we have to go with it. Okay. I can have yeah. Ashley write something up and we can have a signature put on the board on a letter or... Well, I mean, I think Jamin needs to be contacted just so he can go down and verify that there isn't anything before we just send a, hey, don't do this again, if there is a cost to what he has to do mm -hmm. I mean maybe that'd be the first thing is let them take a look at it and see and he's like oh there's no damage and then go ahead and just send him a letter but okay. right. I hate we'll to send him a letter and then turn around and go back after he comes back because now there's going to be a fee right? and we'd already send a letter just telling them they can't do it yeah okay we will contact Jamin and, um, and ask him to look at it then and then we'll let you guys know okay okay We'll move on to new business. Uh, first, we have uh, Brenda Weaver from Miami County Work for Memory request uh, slash permission to sound sirens for 30 seconds on November 11th as a part of Armistice Day. Um, and we have, I'm sorry. You? Hi, I'm Marie Jean Brindle. I'm okay. here on behalf of Brenda. She's having a great grandbaby today. Oh, well, congratulations. Congratulations. Her. Yeah. <laughs> I will tell her. Um, Am I supposed to come up or just stay here? Or um, I've never done this. If, if you come up and go ahead okay. and speak at the podium, that way the uh, folks at home can uh, okay. hear you better. No, no pressure, though. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, so um, Armistice Day coming up, Veterans Day, is marking 100th uh, anniversary of Armistice Day, the end of World War One. We've been working on this for about a year and a half now. We're going to have a field of poppies in the courthouse lawn, and uh, we are expecting, uh, hopefully, a nice crowd uh, with people placing the poppies. And uh, uh, the Red Cross is also uh, going to partner with us that day with the Bloodmobile, so we would appreciate having um, Fifth Street blocked so that we would have access to that. Um, Access to a porta potty would be really nice, and um, then we talked about so that'd be on a Saturday. That'd be on the tenth, November tenth. That is the second Saturday, so we already have sec or Fifth Street blocked off for that, so it wouldn't be any different. But we typically that late in the year don't do kids' corner because mm -hmm. of the weather. So I don't think it's going to interfere with anything. We, I mean, Todd's already set up to put the barricades out. Nothing would be any different. The only thing would be is if. We always pay for the Porta Johns for second Saturday. If we could just extend it one more month and pay for the one mm -hmm. more down there, just because of the size of the event and there's really no other place to use the restroom that day. Gotcha. Maybe just get one handicap one and just keep that under the second Saturday thing if you guys don't have an issue with that mm -hmm. or where that's getting paid from. Gotcha. So we're paying that. Uh, the city pays that as part of second budget. Saturday. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. So we just have that as part of a monthly deal we have them set up. Usually in November we stop them mm -hmm. just because we don't do that much outdoor. Right. But if, since they have this, such a big event, we may as well just keep it one more month and go ahead and keep 5th Street blocked off. Right. <coughs> do you know how much it costs for that? I think that they are like $89 a piece. Okay. We normally have two a month, but we would only need one <coughs> at that point. I think the handicap one might be like 105 It's somewhere right around in there. That's right. Yep, I don't see any problem with that. Um, and you're asking for permission for the sirens, and then yes, and the so that would be would on Sunday. Be... That would be on Sunday. Um, oh, okay. That would be on Sunday. Okay. The event would start on uh, the 10th at 11 o'clock because we would like to mark a 24-hour period uh, to end at 11 o'clock on the 11th, the at the same time as you know armistice was signed or was declared. And uh, then at that point, it would be really nice to have um, the police squads come and just make noise and uh, the fire departments 
as well. Maybe hoist a flag would be even really, really great. And um, and one one other request is that since the puppies are going to be there for about a week, maybe two weeks, if you could make sure that there's some patrolling going on because they um, this was something that came up in the process of putting them together. They're going to be standing on 36 inches uh, tall uh, stems made out of metal, and uh, we don't want somebody to start pulling them out and playing sword fight with them. Right. Uh, hopefully, there's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. But you know, this is definitely something we don't want to become an issue either. So. Sure. Um, is there going to be on the Sunday then too? Uh, any road closure or anything that's needed? That would be, um, I don't know. We don't think we'll need I, I don't think so, unless they do. Like, can I talk to Chief Meeks about this? Maybe having the squad cars, whatever he can gather up at that point. Maybe being in front of the courthouse. I don't know if we necessarily need to block it off, but they can pull in there and then do their thing and then pull out. And then wherever uh, Chief Hawk would be willing to put the fire truck or whatever he's going to bring down that day. You know, I don't know that they need to road closure for any of that stuff. This is only going to be a 20 minute deal. They pull up a little before at 11, 11, everything happens and then they pull away. Gotcha. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Um, questions or anything from police chief, fire chief, you, know, you guys have any questions for? You just contact you know? me. Okay. So we can get something scheduled. Sounds great. Would you, would you have a card? Yes, I'll get you. Okay. If you have any questions, um, we have, we're going to have 1,500 puppies because we have been able to identify 1,500 um, veterans from World War I. 800 are in our cemeteries here in Miami County. So pretty proud to have been able to identify them. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Thank you. That, um, I guess, so Chief Meeks, um, just let the guys know uh, about the uh, <laughs> you know, possible vandalism that might be happening uh, while the flowers are up. Um, I'll check with the courthouse too as far as our camera system. So okay. um, a little bit on either side of the main walkway is where they're at. So it'll be a couple feet off of the, trying to keep them off of where if somebody's sitting there, they're not reaching them. Mm -hmm. so it'll start a couple feet off, but then if you walk up to the courthouse, both sides will have like seven, 800 on each side spread out through there. And they're like six, eight inches apart, but they are like 30 some inches out of the ground. And they're also clay, like a, yeah. They've made everybody in town made them. Yeah, we had like elementary students make them. Um, they actually brought so them up. They are Fish fragile. I some. mean, so if somebody's up there messing around with them, they will break. Yeah. No. And they're going to go in on that f starting that Friday. Yes. So f Friday, the school kids will come in throughout the day and install them. And then Saturday, we'll come back in. The adults will come in and finish up what they didn't get done. And then the event Saturday and then Sunday. Right. We were talking November the first or the second, I think it's November 2nd, I think Friday is the 2nd. Um, so we're, we're hoping to put 600 in the ground on the Friday with the kids and then hopefully the rest the next day, actually almost all the rest because we're saving 100 for the, for the day of the event. We have 31 gold stars that we hope will be placed, uh, 29 of them by um, Air Force uh, personnel. And uh, then 34 have been claimed by uh, families already. So we're going to try and see if, so that 100 to 150 would be left for that last day. So they will be there for a week? Yes. So luckily it's cool enough that the kids ain't out playing around, but. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, Sunday, uh, they want the sirens to go was it like 11 11. Right. Um, and you know, I'm sure. I guess if uh, officers are on duty and not on a call, they could come. And then I, I think there was some talk about if some officers wanted to volunteer to come out and do it. Because that, it would be, was, a, like I said, a 15 minute stretch. If they was there a couple minutes before 11 o'clock, park their squad cars, and 11 11 set the sirens off for 30 seconds, however, and then pull away, go back to business. Mm -hmm. It's actually 
it's actually uh, part of a bigger picture. It started out with St. Charles. We asked St. Charles if they would toll their bell at 11. They said they would, and then the Centennial Commission at the national level came up with uh, uh, an activity called Bells of Peace. And if you, you can sign up at their site, and this is a movement that's going all the way across the United States at 11 o'clock local time, so this is going to go on across you know, the, the country. Uh, there will be tolling of the bells and uh, noise making at 11 o'clock in remembrance of Armistice Day, 1918. And we also have Paul Foreman that day donating his time to light some stuff off at the uh, school as well. Is an animal that works for uh, the fire department? Yeah, he's already got it. Okay, gotcha. Uh, but the the fire truck on Sunday too will come by. Okay. All right. Um, there was some discussion about the um, the noise ordinance and getting permission to do this. Um, when I looked online, I, mean, I was on the city council when we passed the noise ordinance. But I could not find it online or in our book really yeah I, I I don't know if I missed it but I cannot find it anywhere it's doesn't the, it have it's more in, it's in the code of 155 or one, I think it's 155 in there. Is it 155 but this would be during the I mean 11 o'clock in the morning I don't that's what I was gonna say does yeah. it have more to do with the time of night or I, well and I, I wanted to look at it to see exactly what it said because I believe from when when we passed it years ago that it's there's some language in there about it being sustained noise and like one one thing happening that's like a noise doesn't necessarily fall within that unless they keep on doing it again and again like somebody's setting up fireworks and they did one firework that wouldn't necessarily fall within the noise ordinance if that just happened once but then if they're doing that over and over again that does fall in it so I I think by the language in the ordinance it doesn't actually violate it but I just wanted to check what it actually said in there to make sure of that but I mean even if it did violate, I think we can give a pass for this. And um, I don't know, uh, Councillor, if, if you have any uh, direction or specific way you want to go about that. <clears throat> I was going to say, I haven't read that ordinance myself. Um, but in the middle of the day, I guess maybe just make a, a motion to waive ordinance from the time of 11 a.m. to noon on that day. Mm -hmm. And we are going to uh, make sure we send out because a lot of veterans and stuff there, you're setting off fireworks making that noise, you know. Right. So we want to make sure everybody is aware of what we're doing because mm -hmm. Paul's going to be, he'll be at the school but it'll still be loud enough throughout town. So it'll be, we'll try to reach out to the Tribune and whoever else to make everybody aware of what's going on. So they start hearing all that, they don't freak sure. out in the middle of the afternoon. Mm -hmm. Right. So. Yeah, we can put something on the on, on the uh, mayor's uh, page too on Facebook. Perfect. Um, I'll have to make a point to let Ashley know that. Would you require some? Uh, I I gave Steve some press release forms if he wants to share those. If there's something else that you need, just let me know, and I will make sure you receive that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Right. Um, any other questions from the public or anyone in the audience? Is there any questions, any other questions from the board about what we're uh, proposing? I don't think so. It sounds like we've covered everything. Is there anything we haven't thought of? I think that's all. Uh, I don't know uh, how do we want to word our motion. Or, like I said, I couldn't find the ordinance word actually beforehand to see exactly what's in that. Uh, but just in case it's uh, something that's technically in violation, what kind of permission we want to lay out in a, in a motion? Well, do we want to do what city attorney suggested and waive the noise ordinance from For that June? hour? Sure. And. Yeah, motion to suspend ordinance. One sec, I'm trying to bring it up here. What is what type of ordinance is? Uh, 
High speed internet. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, high speed internet. Yeah. I think dial up's faster. I hear you'll be speaking at this event. Uh, yes, <laughs> I believe so. Is that the theme of this? Do we need a, a motion for the road closure then? No, that that's part we've of already had that part of like Saturday. Saturday. So gotcha. Todd does like they normally does, and. Okay. And if the blood mobile, because that's still in question, if they don't show up, we just will leave the barricades where they're sitting and leave the road open. So there would be no reason to close it if the blood mobile is not, is not there. Okay, gotcha. And then they'll go to the courthouse to get permission for power and everything else. Okay. Counselor, uh, you want us just to reference it just by the noise, noise ordinance? I think I found it. Oh, I'm sorry, Chief. I think it's in one. Are you into the ordinances? I am. One. Were you going to say 151? 151. Go to 151. 040. 151. 060. Point zero six zero. Yep. Still rolling. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I hate to uh, suspend the wrong ordinance. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> for an hour. It might not be a good something thing. Something crazy going on for so an hour. 151. One fifty one zero six zero six six U. Technology is a beautiful thing. I I tell you, I I've looked all over for that. I could not find it. You would think there'd be keywords. That you could I I did. I put noise in as a keyword, and it didn't come up. And I was looking at the week program. That is Decibel. very decibel would have been a good one. I didn't think of that. Okay, no per no person shall produce any noise that will exceed noise levels of sixty four decibels daytime or nighttime measured twenty five feet from the noise source or the same level criteria measured at the property line, which causes a common nuisance to surrounding Make neighborhood. Do that for Honestly, though, um, well, but no specifically person, that's in the more than one person adding the sound. Fireworks being allowed during. It's line. not like one individual is doing all this, causing all this noise. It says no person shall, and I mean, one could argue that no one person is making all this noise. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Lots of them. It just. Yeah, well, that well, could, be, could be a tricky uh, loophole we're creating there. Yeah, no, <laughs> it is. It's only for. What, 30 seconds? Yeah. yeah. So it's not going to be for a whole hour. Yeah, and that's ordinance 151.066 um, U. Okay. All right. No uh, caveats on, like, public people doing that or something like that. Yeah. So every time the fire truck goes down the street, basically they break the notice of permit. <laughs> I mean, no, I don't. Read that way. That's, that's, that's what it says. This guy. <laughs> There's exceptions in state law for emergency vehicles. So would this count? Vehicles that we'll be doing <laughs> right? There you go. Um, but there's more than that. The, yeah. 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 Yes, they aren't in the commission of their duties. So, yeah. um, so we can I don't that ordinance during that time and be covered. We'll just do a, a, yeah, a that or suspension, <laughs> suspension of ordinance 151.066U. For November 11th from 11 to 11:30. There you go. Okay, great. <laughs> okay. So do I have that? So moved. All right. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Dave, did you make that motion then? No. She Kristen did. made it. Steve seconded it. Okay. Right. We want to be very specific in what we're doing here. Okay. Thank you very much. Yes. Um, is there anything else that we need to cover with that, or is that... No, because everything else I think is already covered under Second Saturday. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much. We'll look forward to seeing you then. Thank you. Uh, next on our agenda, we have uh, the Rotary Club.
Uh, I don't see Mike. Um, it is a change in route and traffic control for the Cole Porter Classic 5K on October 6th, 9 a.m. Uh, we do have an attachment, and I don't know if it shows up very clearly on the attachment, but from what... I think I just gave you guys the map, but there was it was a two-sided. There's a letter on the back, so I'll have Dustin pass this up there if you want to read that as well. From what I recall, I think what they're doing is they're starting... Are they starting... At the Riverview Event Center. Gotcha. On the canal, head west towards West City Park, and then on to the Nickel Plate. Yeah. Because from what I was told, they are going to use that small part that is just gravel uh, that goes immediately after the bridge where the extension is going to be. Yep. From what I understand, they're going to go through uh, West City Park, and they're going to get on that gravel path and take that gravel path to the trail. To the trail. And then they got a the 5K turnaround here and a 15, 15K turnaround down here. So uh, I imagine they just need... Uh, do you guys know, in years previous, do they just close one lane or both lanes where they need it between the Riverview and getting to West City Park? I talked to Dan Rush, who is kind of in cahoots all the time with Mike, and I, mm -hmm. I know they're going to have somebody at every intersection, so I think they're actually asking for that whole street to be blocked the whole street. off during okay. that duration. So, but I, I can only, I can see where we all really, really need to block off is that southern, uh, the south lane of that whole stretch there and, and, and at that time of the day very 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 light traffic you're talking right. eight o'clock nine o'clock in the morning on a saturday morning is especially mm -hmm. that area should be no concerns there but i know that he has already coordinated to have every intersection have somebody there including law enforcement emergency management and some of their own personnel okay eric do you have any uh comment or it, will it matter to the fire department if it's both lanes or one yeah, i think we're partaking in i'd have to check our schedule but our UTV is going to follow up, if I remember right. Okay. I, I know we're doing a race coming up, and I'm not exactly sure what that's saying. Okay. All right. Uh, any questions from the board? Do you think this is going to be an easy route? Very much so. They used to start at the circus building in called Miami, so we had to block Main to Miami, and then they went down Canal. Did they go down Canal? No, yeah. they they but then they went across. Didn't they go across? They've the bridge. They've done several different yeah, they across the bridge on Broadway. So yeah, this is. I, I recommend we close the whole thing for that short distance. It just every time we've done it, we've kept the lane open. All we take is one person. Something happens and a car moves. And right. We wiped out. The traffic's not that heavy that to close it, you're not impacting a lot of people. Yeah, that's a great point. Uh, any other comment? Any question from the board? Um, so, let's do a motion to close the road in its entirety from, uh, let's see, along Canal, from in front of the, the Riverview Event Center, west to West City Park. Um, This is just until they get through, correct? Is it going to run into that? I think so, but they'll turn around and come back, will they? they? Come, yeah. Some of them come shoot. back fast enough the that they're coming back while there's still people going out. It's oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Going well, that must be nice. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Gabe. Yeah. The chili cook-off is going that other direction this year. They're starting at Riverview and going the other direction, so I don't know if that's going to run into anything because we start set up at... 6.37. 6 7 o'clock, you know the routine. Mm -hmm. So are you guys going to be east of? Yeah, you guys. It wouldn't affect us unless they're going to use the parking lot to the Riverview. Then that might are. affect it. They oh, they are, are going to do that. Uh, my understanding is we're doing another. The community foundation is doing a bunch of things also too there at the same time. So that's why they're starting at Riverview this year. I mean, I guess it just depends on where they start. If they start on the side or behind the Riverview, taken off, then it wouldn't affect the parking lot any. So if the barricades were just. Right on the west Riverview. end of the parking lot there, basically right. at the front of Riverview, and then it'd be blocked off from that way. So you could still get into the Riverview parking lot and get back out, and then they, they would... Up, they wanted us, as far as the participants, to use the parking lot behind the Riverview after we've, we're done with our setup. 
So I don't know if that's going to cause any issue. We can probably manage it if we just close it a moment. We'll just close it from the start temporarily and then put and then actually do the closure at Holman. Well, and if a cooker shows up and say, hey, we just need to get through, then they'll just right. direct them through right. if there's nobody there. Yeah. I mean, it's just not for the general public to be in and out of there. I right. think we would be fine. I and it depends on where Mike and them actually started. If it's at the back of the property, then it really wouldn't affect us. But if it's going to be in the front parking lot, then that would be hectic trying to get all the cars in and out that morning as they're leaving. I guess maybe we can just talk to Mike and figure out where he's planning on starting it at. I know they're using the Riverview this year because, like I said, they changed the whole complete location. Right. So because of the Community Foundation and that going on at the same time. So. I wonder if Mike's aware of all that, too. So. I think what we should... Yeah. I think the road closure is still right. going to happen no matter what. Right, yeah. We've been with it for years because the, the run has always went right there on Canal Street and we've always had our, you know, had to get our vehicles in on the other side. So it's been that way for years for us to manage yeah, this that. Should be, so. This should ultimately be easier. It's just different. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think as long as we make sure to make both of the different events aware of what the other one's doing uh, far enough ahead of time so that they can plan for that. Like you said, I don't think it's going to change the road closure. Well, no, you pull up there and they let you through when there's nobody around you cross the road, get in the parking lot. Yeah, sure. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, but again, I, I think just making sure that uh, both the organizations are aware of each other. And it's a, uh, is it harvesting capabilities that's having there? Okay. because he's always my contact guy. I'll call them and try to see if they won't coordinate that. And I'll report back on that. I know we've got a board of works meeting about four days before that event, so I'll just report back that Thank you. Yep. All right. Um, so uh, do I have a motion to uh, approve the road, clo road, road closure request as presented? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Um, next is the uh, Prue High School uh, retroactive permission for the annual homecoming parade on Friday, September 14th. We had a young uh, a gentleman from the uh, Prue High School uh, student council, student council. Uh, came to a city council meeting asking for the permission. So they 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 were a little confused on where they needed to get that. He came to the um, yeah the regular council meeting instead of board of works. Yeah. So he tried. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> it's an effort. You yeah. had some bad information, we all get right. that. So um, I one of the things that I think um, hearing back from I can't remember uh, who who was telling me about it, but the candy being thrown out uh, when they did have the parade, because um, it, it was just a partial uh, closure of the road. Or was it I didn't think it was any closure. We yeah. had the parade with the incoming traffic, hunting out the traffic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was like yeah. baiting the little kids. It was. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, no. yeah. Um, <laughs> So I guess just uh, for, you know, lessons learned and for future, uh, you know, with that stuff, um, getting, because we, we got the rushed permission uh, to do that, um, that parade, um, but definitely having a heads up and preparing a little bit for the traffic conditions and, you know, preparing or letting them know about stuff. See, in the past, they've always closed both roads or everybody pulled over mm -hmm. as they went through because there's only yeah. four uh, trailers, yeah, abandoned four trailers is really all it is. So it's a very short, and usually all the cars just kind of pull over, stop yeah, as they went through, right? Yeah, but obviously so. not this year, yeah. Some did, some did, yeah. <laughs> so we'll just have to remember that for next year to try to get it more blocked off and stop the traffic, or uh, I don't know, be a little bit more thorough on that. Isn't it led by a squad car? It is, people just like. Kept going. Really? Do they normally throw a candy for that one? Um, I don't really remember. They I don't have, remember they ever. Have. Do they? Tootsie rolls. Yeah. 
Yeah. I don't remember them throwing it across the lane, though. I've had kids at Peru forever, and I've gone to that. Well, and I don't ever remember there being cars going the other right. direction until after we had already passed. Right. right. Because you got kids walking everywhere alongside the floats. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, it, maybe next year just uh, have an extra officer to kind of go beside them. Head or, right on head and heading in yeah, traffic. Or, you know, flag them, tell people to cut it out, but they're ignore the parade so <laughs> um so uh any other questions or comment before we uh do a, a little retroactive permission for the parade that already was anything from the public board uh do i have a motion uh for a retroactive permission on the homecoming parade so moved second all in favor aye aye, aye. all right I think that is all to come before the board tonight. Um, is there anything else that we need to go over tonight, Chief? I don't know. Okay. If there's nothing else, uh, motion to adjourn would be in order. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank I've you. I've got folks. a couple more.